quarter. The money it made from selling stock and trading did not change from a year ago, and some of its business actually declined. Morgan Stanley shares were higher before the market opened until its earnings were released and the stock turned sharply lower. Signet Jewelers is predicting this will be a disappointing quarter after slower holiday sales. Signet owns the K. Jared and Sterling Jewelers businesses. The company says it was not able to get enough customers into its stores in key weeks in December. For the first time, an iconic British sports car will also be made in China. The Lotus, driven by Roger Moore as James Bond in 1977's The Spy Who Loved Me, is getting a new factory in China. China-based Geely owns more than half of the brand. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Ginny Cosola. Imagining a better bank starts with looking at the savings rates most banks offer and saying, really? Capital One is building something better. You can open a Capital One savings account with one of the nation's best savings rates from anywhere, like here. Or here. Or here! One of the nation's best savings rates. Opened online, at a Capital One location, or from anywhere. That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? For consumers only. Offered by Capital One NA member FDIC. Copyright 2018 Capital One. The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, a local Health Mart pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. Now we are in our eighth year. This is our 355th program. We're glad you joined us. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and, of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Brad White, a compounding pharmacist, and our very special guest, Dr. Justin Dunn, cardiologist at Summa Health and president of the Akron American Heart Association Board of Directors. Good morning, Doctor. Welcome to the show. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. The American Heart Association recently updated the cholesterol guidelines, and the results have shed light not only on actual numbers, but also the risk factors, including race. New guidelines found that race and ethnic backgrounds can indicate risk factors for heart disease in specific populations. Overall, the American Heart Association says that nearly one out of every three American adults has high levels of LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, and it can build up along the artery walls and lead to higher chances of heart attack, disease, and stroke. Today we're going to talk more about these new guidelines, risk factors, and give you some more information to live a healthier life. We'd like to remind you that our program is available on our podcast. You can download it from the App Store on your favorite smartphone, and you can listen to our program anywhere you go. So look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You can also give us some questions today. You can post them up on our live Facebook feed, or you can give us a call here today at the radio station at 330-450-1480. So, Doctor, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and all that sort of thing? Are you from Ohio? Sure, I am not from Ohio. Uh, I grew up in Topeka, Kansas, and uh, then I kind of traveled, left home, traveled all over the place for my training. I went to the University of Notre Dame, and then from there I went on to to study medicine and get a public health degree at Boston University. I did my internal medicine residency at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore uh, for a few years, and then I left there and came to the Cleveland Clinic to do all my cardiology training, so general cardiology, and then uh, two extra years of interventional training to do extra procedures. And that's what brought me to Ohio, and uh, met my wife there at the clinic, and no, no s- settled right. down here. Here we are. How neat is that? Yeah, I've been very happy here. How uh, neat. Um, so, what is your role with the American Heart Association? I'm currently the uh, uh, president-elect of the, of the board. Um, I've been involved with the Heart Association here locally for about three years. And uh, I help um, uh, with uh, outreach, organizing events, um, fundraising, anything that the American Heart Association does, uh, research, et cetera, uh, I try to get involved with. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a great opportunity. I think it's, uh, I think it's um, something that people uh, don't realize uh, goes on here. I think the American Heart Association does a lot for this, uh, the communities that it's involved in, um, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. Very interesting. <clears throat> we hear there's new cholesterol guidelines, which I think sometimes makes people worry, especially after they've set all their New Year's resolutions. Yes. What, what, what does it all mean, and how are these guidelines going to be different from what we've been familiar with in the past? Sure. Uh, well, guidelines are put out 
essentially by large uh, medical organizations to try to provide some guidance to, to clinicians across the country and across the world uh, to kind of standardize care based on um, evidence and studies that have been done, research that's been done. Uh, there was a, a, a guideline for cholesterol management that came out about five or six years ago in 2013. And, um, you know, that, that did have a bit of a paradigm shift in that it, it, um, it focused a lot more on uh, long-term risk of patients. So it tried to identify patients uh, that potentially had a long-term uh, potential risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, disease such as heart attacks, strokes, et cetera, um, and tried to identify those patients and, and, and use interventions to try to prevent um, and, uh, and treat uh, atherosclerotic disease. The guideline that just came out a couple of months ago uh, it kind of expand on that concept and um, they actually take the, uh, the risk stratification of patients and they broaden it even further and make it more specific. So in the previous guidelines, uh, we kind of looked at patients uh, in a couple of different ways. We looked at patients that had atherosclerotic disease and we tried to figure out how to prevent further um, incidents such as heart attacks and strokes. And then we also look at patients in the primary prevention population where you look at patients that have never had a, a, a heart attack or stroke and you're trying to prevent that first episode. And you base that on risk factors, family history, uh, et cetera. Um, and we kind of had two major pools that we looked at. Now with these newer guidelines, uh, we look at those patients broken down even further. So even within the secondary prevention cohort of patients, uh, patients that have atherosclerotic disease, we try to separate them out into um, uh, high risk and very high risk patients and try to change management based on that. And then for primary prevention, we really try to tease out which patients are at the highest risk and which patients are at the lowest risk. And then we look at patients kind of in between and, and decide what management is best for each one of those patients. Um, there are a few other subtle differences, one of which uh, I think a lot of patients will be happy to hear about is that, you know, there's a little bit more of a shift toward uh, when you do have your cholesterol checked, it used to be we recommended you, you be fasting for several hours and not have eaten anything. Um, and now, for most patients, for screening purposes, um, a non-fasting check of mm. cholesterol is typically sufficient. Mm. I get that question often, so that's interesting to hear you say. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's been a nice change. It's, it's nice for the physicians as well, because when patients come in, then we don't have to have them wait eight hours, get a lab check, call them over the phone. Sometimes we can have them check right as they come into the office and then discuss it in the office visit. So then basically, from what you're laying out, it's no longer your numbers have to be on this little scorecard. You're taking into account a lot of other things based on their current risk profile, so it's more tailored. Exactly. And, you know, in, in very old versions of the guidelines, we used to say, look, you have to hit a very specific number, uh, otherwise we don't feel you're being treated appropriately. We've kind of shifted away from that. We still use numbers and we still check cholesterol to look at efficacy of treatment, um, and how people respond to treatment, and then identifying risk up front. If you have extremely high numbers or extremely low numbers, et cetera, that might change our management. But we don't use exact targets that we have to hit. Now, we do use numbers as thresholds, and I can talk a little bit more th about that later. Um, but sometimes when patients are on good therapy and we still see their numbers not quite in a range we want, sometimes it will uh, push us to have a discussion with the patient about enhanced therapies. Okay, so with new guidelines, I'm thinking... You're probably going to have patients before that thought they were in the clear, and now they're not. And are you going to have any that, well, you're probably going to still have patients that weren't in the clear that still have some things to deal with. Sure. But, but it's probably going to be an interesting switch for patients that thought they were doing everything right. Sure, yeah. And, um, you know, I, all the guidelines that we've had in, in the last few iterations have emphasized that uh, a healthy lifestyle is really the cornerstone of all atherosclerotic disease prevention and treatment. So um, a, a healthy diet, exercise, um, not smoking, healthy weight management, et cetera. Uh, these things are all extremely important uh, to not only um, treating atherosclerotic disease, but also preventing kind of that first episode. So that's kind of the cornerstone for all patients, regardless of their, of their risk and regardless of their age. Um, but, you know, now that we have more tailored therapies, there might be some patients that were kind of lumped into a lower risk category that if we look at it more closely and tease things out and look at some more of these risk factors that have kind of popped up, um, then we might say, okay, look, you're kind of getting into a range where we start thinking about um, pushing beyond lifestyle change and maybe starting to think about uh, medication treatments. There, there may be some patients that fall into that category or further testing. 
Okay. You know, maybe we better do a little bit of housekeeping. What about, um, for our listeners, can you make break down what really is cholesterol? And you've talked about atheros- atherosclerotic plaque. Can you talk about what that is and sure. how it relates to cholesterol? Sure, of course, yeah. So, you know, a, a cholesterol is... And cholesterol is basically just kind of a, a, a fatty, waxy substance that it, it's uh, it's present in all of our cells, and it's it's needed by everybody to um, to maintain uh, life. Um, it produces certain hormones that are necessary for life. It, it helps us to convert uh, sunlight into vitamin D. Um, so, and it helps us kind of maintain cell integrity. So it's important. So cholesterol is important. Correct. Yeah. Cholesterol is important. However, uh, cholesterol needs to be kind of maintained at a specific level. And the body is relatively good at maintaining uh, cholesterol at the levels that it needs. Um, Now, cholesterol does not just kind of float around in the bloodstream. It's attached to certain uh, lipoproteins, and they're kind of packaged into little um, uh, uh, packages. And there are different types of these packages, and these these are kind of lipoprotein uh, packages that are what you hear about in the news primarily, and those would be considered things like LDL, low-density lipoprotein, which is the bad cholesterol, and high-density li- lipoprotein, which is the good cholesterol. And um, low-density lipoprotein, or LDL, the bad cholesterol, tends to be more atherogenic, meaning that it tends to go out into the body and deposit itself into uh, walls of arteries based on um, different factors, different cells that are available, different um, uh, milieu, like inflammatory uh, milieu, that might create more of an opportunity for for that plaque to build up in the arteries. Are there are there <clears throat> certain areas in the body that are, are more prone to, to be for that to attach? To? Yes, yes, and the coronary arteries are certainly one of those places. The heart arteries that the arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle, um, the carotid arteries that supply um, blood to the brain, and then you know, um, depending on other risk factors, uh, arteries in the legs. Uh, arteries in the belly, the giant artery in the belly. So certainly can affect all of them, but yes, it is. It does have a, a predilection towards certain areas, and that's just based on um, the certain milieu that's created there and certain receptors and certain cells that are located in those areas. We used to hear a lot about the carotid clogged arteries. Yes. And, and they would clean them out, and, and there's, a, there's a chance that something would break loose. Correct. Go to the brain, or, or is that still a current process? Yes. Yes, atherosclerosis is a global process in the body. It can affect most of the major arteries, and uh, and so you can get plaque buildup um, in the heart. You can get plaque buildup in the neck, and the arteries going to the brain, and some of that plaque can cause uh, problems and can, can lead to stroke. So, um, you know, certainly carotid disease is uh, is a risk factor for for stroke. But the the general management for all these patients, at least as as far as um, medical therapy, uh, is generally the same. Um, yeah. And 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 lifestyle changes, etc. So bad cholesterol, the LDL can build up in the in the arteries. HDL, the good cholesterol, tends to be a little bit of a scavenger. It tends to take cholesterol out of the blood system and take it back to the liver, where it can be processed and broken down um, and taken out of the system, so it can't deposit in the arteries. So that's kind of a very basic overview of the bad cholesterol, good cholesterol, um, and how those two things work and how they um, how they work together. Safe levels. Safe levels. Um, you know, generally, uh, you kind of want a total cholesterol less than 150, and that, that kind of correlates with a bad cholesterol of 100 or so milligrams per deciliter. Um, and then depending on uh, sex, uh, your high-density lipoprotein or your HDL, your good cholesterol, generally above anywhere from 40 to 60, you want it kind of above that level uh, to say you have a good level of good cholesterol. Why the difference between male and female? Um, a lot of it is based on um, the way... Uh, hormones interact with uh, cholesterol in the way um, the, the hormones that women have um, that can uh, change your levels of cholesterol. Um, some of those men have and some of those men do not have. And so there's a little bit of difference in sex based on just hormones in general. So as an individual ages, um, uh, male or female, and their, and their hormone levels decline. Correct. That causes... More deposits of cholesterol? Or? It can. Yep. Some of the hormones that women have can be somewhat protective early on in life. So, in fact, uh, a, a woman who has early menopause, you know, say before the age of 40, that's considered a risk factor for atherosclerotic disease. Hmm. And, you know, you'll notice that um, if you look at uh, identifying people with a family history, 
if people have a male in their family that had a heart attack before the age of 55, that's considered a similar risk factor to somebody who had a, a, a woman in the family with a, a heart attack or stroke before the age of 65. Uh, because again, those hormones can be somewhat protective, so we push that age back a little bit further. So, hmm. do we supplement their hormones or not? <laughs> that's a, that's it's a great question. Um, I, w- I will say we don't know the we don't know the answer to that right now. I'd say it's an individual patient decision at this point. Okay, okay. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Hi, this is Brad White, your medicine center pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with a prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. Brighten your day with beautiful stained glass from Studio Arts and Glass. Let the sun shine in through a stunning beveled glass window that forms a rainbow on your walls. Commission a piece of art to cherish for years. All at Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, or shop online at StudioArtsAndGlass.com. That's StudioArtsAndGlass.com. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we're talking about the new cholesterol guidelines with Dr. Justin Dunn. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we're talking about the new cholesterol guidelines with Dr. Justin Dunn, cardiologist and president of the Akron American Health Association and board of directors. Have a question? Post it on our live Facebook feed. Um, Okay. What about misconceptions about cholesterol? I know we didn't quite finish that. Yeah. Um, can we just ignore it? Yeah, <laughs> there there are a lot of misconceptions about um, about cardiovascular disease in general, but I think about you know cholesterol in particular. I think a couple of the important ones would be um, people think that uh, problems with cholesterol and problems with heart disease and stroke are problems of uh, the elderly and people who are older. I think what's important to emphasize, and I think what these guidelines, new guidelines, emphasize relatively well is the fact that atherosclerotic disease is kind of a lifelong, slow process. And we try to um, catch these patients before they have their first major event, first major heart attack, first major stroke. That's the ideal situation. So um, screening and uh, lifestyle change are very important early on in patients. Um, We recommend your first lipid check, um, at least for adults, at the age of 20, and then possibly every five years after that. There are some pediatric uh, organizations that that now recommend screening children for um, kind of genetic cholesterol disorders as young as the age of 9 or 10. 
you know, they recommend screening all children for that. So, um, that's you know, because of diet intake. Perhaps? Nope, that is because of a genetic disorder. Okay. Uh, that's typically because of genetic disorder. Um, the obesity epidemic does play a bit of a role there. We try to catch, um, you know, it certainly causes cholesterol problems. Uh, so we try to catch some of this early. But identifying uh, children who have extremely high levels of cholesterol would be important early on because it would hmm. lead to initiation of therapy yeah. other than what we have now. So that's one misconception is that it's a, a problem of the old. And I think another misconception that I think is important to mention is that um, it's a problem of men only. Uh, the American Heart Association has done a lot to um, uh, uh, put the idea out there that atherosclerotic disease affects both men and women, still the number one killer of women as well. So, um, and we can talk more about the Go Red campaign later, but um, uh, I think that is a common misconception is that women often think this is a problem they don't have to deal with. But again, uh, it's important to identify risk factors in women early on. Hmm. Um, okay, so why why is i mean we probably have already answered this question mostly but we got a high level of cholesterol and what's the next move here well it's a good question i i think uh, the most important thing is to identify the problem so it's important to go to your doctor find a doctor for one go to your doctor routinely and and talk about um cholesterol uh, talk about risk factors um again uh, Screening often begins at a young age, so getting that first cholesterol check at age 20 or so um, can identify, it's, you know, certainly if you have risk factors, like if you have a family member, a close family member, father, mother that died at a young age of a heart attack or stroke, certainly you want to get involved early with your doctor to identify your risk and try to mitigate risk uh, as much as possible so that moving forward you can kind of prevent that first major heart attack or stroke. So uh, I, I think identifying those people is is important um, because there are certain lifestyle changes we can make and there are certain treatments we have that can really impact um, your disease burden later in life but you have to start early you have to start early so it's very important to identify this if you have high cholesterol um, it is important to get that cholesterol down we have seen time and time again in our studies that high levels of bad cholesterol um, can be treated and should be treated uh, to try to uh, uh, prevent progression of atherosclerotic disease. So uh, identifying cholesterol problems is important both from a primary prevention pr perspective and to try to prevent subsequent events if you've already had an event. You know, I come from a, a period where people really didn't discuss their health problems with their family. I mean, I'm 75 years old, okay? Sure. So, you know, I have some in, in, in storing some info in my brain about my father. I saw him come home one day with a prescription for Ornase. Oh, I have pancreatitis, you know. You don't have pancreatitis. As I look at it now, <laughs> it was something else. Right, it? right. So, but, but some other things like that where, you know, we didn't kick this stuff around at the table as a kid, you know. Yep. Um, but now it's pretty common that everybody talks about their, uh, you know, which pill are you taking and, you know, what are you taking and all that sort of thing. So um, uh, I guess patient history is extremely important. How Absolutely. Do, how do we get that into, and family patient, how do we get that into, into the people to, you know, pass that info on? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a great point. I, people often feel uncomfortable talking about um, the family history or their own medical problems. But, you know, I think we've seen through, um, number one, through support groups that identifying other people that have similar medical problems makes it much easier to come forward with your medical problems. Yeah. Um, we've seen that with all kinds of different types of diseases. And then just discussing family history, having a good understanding of what your family history is is extremely important for something like atherosclerotic disease because there is a very strong genetic component and there are steps we can take early on that can really have an impact later in life. So it's very, very important that you discuss this um, with your family and understand you know, what medical problems your family members have. Okay. You're listening to Health Matters at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're talking about the new cholesterol guidelines with Dr. Justin Dunn.
You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. This is WHBC AM Canton, News Talk 1480 WHBC. I'm Matt Demchek with 1480 WHBC News. The Stark County Highway Department snowplow crews are ready to do battle with Mother Nature this weekend. So our plan for this storm, since it's coming Saturday, starting Friday night, we'll have, uh, we've divided our drivers into two crews. So we'll have one crew on call at all time from Friday night through Sunday. County Engineer Keith Bennett is asking people to be courteous with his 23 snow plows on the roadways. We just ask that uh, you give us plenty of room and be patient and take your time. The National Weather Service has included Stark County in a winter storm watch for Saturday morning through Sunday morning. It looks like we're in line to get 8 to 12 inches of snow. The Ohio Department of Aging is asking people to check on their elderly neighbors during the storm to make sure they're doing okay. A woman was arrested after a welfare check revealed drug activity and children in danger. The Alliance Police Department says officers located Candy Risden's four-year-old child at a laundromat across the street from her residence on State Route 183. The child had crossed the busy road alone. According to court documents, when officers located the child's apartment, Risden was found sleeping and her one-month-old child was crying. Officers say meth and drug paraphernalia was in plain sight. Risden was arrested and is facing charges of aggravated possession of drugs and child endangering. This tells you the impact that the GM Lordstown plant closing is having on that community. So many students in the Lordstown School District are moving with their families to other locations that the annual senior night at the end of the school year was moved up to last night. The superintendent says one-fifth of the student population is impacted by the GM and associated plant closures. This hour's Money Talks Word That Wins is... Battery. B-A-T-T-E-R-Y. Battery. Go now to WHBC.com and enter. Because on 1480 WHBC, Money Talks. The warmer weather is here. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain-relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. The Medicine Center Pharmacy makes remembering to take your medication easy. Our personalized dose packaging helps keep your medication organized. It's simple, and we package your medication based on when you should take it. So you can take your medication at various times throughout the day, you say? No problem. We can package your medication with the date and time, so all you have to do is tear off your packet and take it with you. Now you never have to wonder if you missed a dose or not. Let us help you keep yourself healthy at the Medicine Center Pharmacy and save money at the same time. We're located in Stark and Tuscarawas Counties. Are you tired of paying hundreds of dollars to find out your A1C and cholesterol levels? You don't have to do that anymore. Every month in each of our pharmacies, you can get your A1C lipid profile, which includes your cholesterol levels as well as glucose results while you wait. A medicine center pharmacist will draw your blood and give you the results in just minutes. You can also get your blood pressure checked for free. Call us to find out when we'll be in the Neighborhood Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. 330-454-8772. Brighten your day with beautiful stained glass from Studio Arts and Glass. Let the sun shine in through a stunning beveled glass window that forms a rainbow on your walls. Commission a piece of art to cherish for years. All at Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, or shop online at StudioArtsandGlass.com. That's StudioArtsandGlass.com. City weather. 
Here's your AccuWeather forecast. Today and tonight are just going to be cloudy through tomorrow. We're going to have snow starting tomorrow morning and lasting into tomorrow night. The winds will also pick up, leading to blizzard conditions, reducing visibility and blowing the snow around. Looks like we will accumulate 8 to 12 inches, but there will be lake enhanced snow during the day on Sunday. I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson for News Talk 1480 WHBC. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we're talking about the new cholesterol guidelines with Dr. Justin Dunn, cardiologist and president of the Akron American Health Association Board of Directors. I have a question posted on our live Facebook feed. So, did we finish the <laughs> conversation? I think we kind of blew, had to run to the commercial. Yeah, I think we were just talking about, you know, the importance of getting cholesterol under control. Uh, I think at this point uh, in time, we understand the risk of, of cholesterol, um, having high cholesterol, and uh, it's important to identify it early and, and get it treated early through lifestyle change and through medical therapy. So we're not here to talk about diet, I guess, but all right, I cut back on the beef and the meat and all mm -hmm, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that a good plan? Uh, yeah, you know, cutting back on red meat certainly helps. Um, you know, diet certainly plays a role in not only cholesterol levels, but also the way cholesterol is handled in the body. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear a lot of talk about trans fats, saturated fats, different types of, of fat that we ingest, um, some good fat, some bad fat. Uh, that's all very important. You know, certain types of fat um, increase the atherogenicity or the, the um, likelihood that cholesterol is going to deposit in the arteries and it also certain types of diet increase inflammation in the body which is a bad thing in general uh, so uh, you know certainly diet is important uh, you know you can you can uh, pick a number of, of healthy diets um, Mediterranean diet is a good option uh, the American Heart Association has a lot on the website about good diet options in general fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. um, you know lean meats whole grains uh, low fat dairy products etc and then really trying to minimize saturated fats and really eliminating <clears throat> trans fats from your diet altogether. Um, I think all those things are important. So, um, yeah, diet definitely plays a role. And again, you know, lifestyle change is the cornerstone of all um, treatment for cholesterol, uh, high cholesterol and atherosclerotic disease in general. So uh, exercise plays an important component as well. And... Um, you know, making sure you exercise at least three to five times a week, moderate to high intensity exercise, 30 to 60 minutes. Um, I think that's going to be critical for long term benefit and for sure. decreasing inflammation, decreasing cholesterol levels, et cetera, decreasing blood pressure, um, smoking cessation. If you smoke cigarettes, one of the best things you can probably do for your health moving forward is to quit smoking altogether, not cut back on smoking, but just completely eliminate smoking cigarettes altogether. Alcohol consumption? Alcohol consumption in, in moderation. You know, we certainly don't uh, encourage people to initiate alcohol use, but if you do drink alcohol, limit it to one drink a day uh, for women, two drinks a day for men. Mm. Um, beyond that, you potentially run into some adverse uh, effects. And the red wine concept? Red wine concept, <laughs> I, I think uh, there may be some slight benefits of red wine over other alcohol. Yeah. Um, you know, some studies show that there is benefits, some don't. Um, if you do have that one drink, maybe red wine has a slight benefit over having a beer or a cocktail, but uh, we don't know that uh, for sure. I heard this morning on the radio coming in that the alcohol uh, spirits, you know, hard liquor, uh, uh, his continues to decline. Yeah, which I thought was consumption. Very, consumption. Yeah. Okay, that was very interesting. Yeah. Um, I not too long ago. Bourbon was the big thing. Sure. You know? and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's gone. So I don't. It's that sort of a, a statistic kind of changes by the weather. Yeah. Uh, I think some of it's just cultural shift in uh, what people drink now. There's a you know, young people tend to have um, moved away from cocktails and and drink more beer and mm -hmm. and wine. Um, there's a big craft beer movement. A lot yeah, of people sure. like the craft brewers now. So I think that's probably part of it. Hmm. Interesting. You know. Um, in the pharmacy, we often hear patients that come in and they're just like, 
they ask the pharmacist, what can I take that'll fix me? You know, they want that magic bullet. Sure. They yep. want the one thing that'll make yeah. it all great, the panacea of solutions. And um, as I hear you speak and think about what I've read in the past, it's just, it's a group effort. It's diet, it's exercise, and it's it, possibly some medication too. Yes. Probably all three. Um, what do you, what can you recommend to the people that think just because they take their Lipitor, they can go have their cheeseburger? Yeah. Uh, that's certainly not the case. Um, again, you know, for anybody with, you know, just anybody in general as we get older, diet and exercise is good for healthy living uh, for all types of disease. Almost every disease process um, is benefited. Uh, patients are benefited uh, either from prevention or treatment of disease through diet and exercise, healthy diet and good exercise regimen. Um Especially in patients with atherosclerotic disease, you know, um, aerobic exercise and a healthy diet are critical uh, for patients who have these um, these conditions. Either high cholesterol and trying to prevent that first event, or patients who've had a heart attack or stroke, with you know, with supervision of your doctor uh, or cardiologist, your primary care doctor, you know, making sure that you don't push yourself beyond what you should be doing. Um, but exercise, um, pretty much for any patient, even with uh, heart disease, is critically important. So just across the board, I think that's, regardless of what medications you're on, that's, that does not change with advancing uh, atherosclerotic disease. Now you're looking for uh, kind of biggest bang for your buck. Once you get, obviously, once you get past lifestyle change and you start getting to the territory where you have um, certain risk factors, or you have certain cholesterol levels, or you have atherosclerotic disease that lead to initiation of a statin therapy. So <clears throat> just talking about initiation of medical therapy, you talking about the two major cohorts that we've discussed at the beginning, there are patients with atherosclerotic disease, patients who had a heart attack or stroke, had a stent or bypass surgery or had a heart attack. Um, and then there are patients who are in the primary prevention cohort of patients who are people that have not had their first event but have risk factors potentially for it. Um, in the patients who have atherosclerotic disease, in general, across the board for almost every patient, uh, without exception, those patients should be on a statin medication, usually a high-intensity statin medication, uh, to try to reduce your bad cholesterol by greater than 50%. Um, if you're in that cohort um, and you have other risk factors, if you have a family history also and you have uh, in kidney disease and you have high blood pressure, et cetera, um, and your levels don't get below a certain number, let's say 70 milligrams per deciliter, then you start talking about adding on other therapies. The primary therapy that we would talk about is a drug called azetamide, which essentially uh, decreases absorption in the intestine of cholesterol. So relatively low side effect profile. Um, so those would be kind of the two major drugs you'd be looking at here. PCSK9 inhibitors you may have heard about in the news. This is a, a newer drug. Uh, it's an injectable drug, subcutaneous injection that... Um, can be beneficial in certain really, really high-risk populations or patients that are truly intolerant to statins, which is a very um, uh, small population. Most patients can, intoler can tolerate statins to some extent. Um, you know, the guidelines do mention these uh, in very high-risk patients. It's not something we reach to early on. Um, these drugs are very expensive. It takes, uh, it takes a discussion with your doctor, with your insurance company to, to move toward this. But in general, if we're talking about biggest bang for your buck medical therapy, you're looking at statin therapies. So, again, patients with atherosclerotic disease, statin therapy is mainstay of medical therapy once you get past lifestyle changes and you need something else. Patients who are in the primary prevention cohort, we kind of have four populations that we look at in the primary prevention cohort. So these are patients that do not have diagnosed atherosclerotic disease. We have a risk calculator. We have multiple risk calculators, but certain risk calculators that we can use to look at patients' risk factors, um, age, high blood pressure, cholesterol levels, et cetera, and we say, okay, what is this patient's 10-year risk of having an atherosclerotic event, heart attack, stroke, et cetera? And based on this, this calculator, which has been validated in certain studies, um, we can give that patient an estimate of their 10-year risk. Um, and the four general categories would be kind of very low risk, less than 5% risk, um, kind of a borderline risk, 5 to 7.5% over the course of 10 years, and then intermediate risk, 75 to, you know, say 20% and then above 20%. On the extreme ends, low risk, less than 5%, probably don't need anything other than lifestyle change. 
diet exercise. You don't really need to kind of push into the medical therapy. Even if you did further testing like a calcium score, which we can talk about, probably wouldn't push you into that um, risk category that you need medical therapy. You just stick with lifestyle change, talk to your doctor, keep in touch with your doctor. Extremely high risk. Um, patients who have never had an event, but they have a greater than 20% tenure risk of having an event, those patients in general should probably be on a statin, probably a high intensity statin. Okay, so those are your two extremes. In between there, you have the borderline between five and seven and a half percent, and you have the intermediate risk between seven and a half and 20%. That's where it gets a little bit uh, nebulous on what you do with these patients. Your borderline patients, um, if you have a lot of risk factors other than just your cholesterol level and your, um, your risk score, um, you can talk to your doctor about maybe initiating a statin, maybe a moderate intensity statin. You could talk about initiating that. If you're in the intermediate range, above 7.5%, probably a statin is worthwhile. Probably a statin is worthwhile. And whether that be moderate or high intensity, it kind of depends on the patient's other risk factors. But that's when you sit down and talk with your doctor and, and say, hey, I've got these risk factors. My 10-year risk is greater than 7.5% of having an atherosclerotic event, a heart attack or stroke. What do I do? How do I prevent that first event? And statin, probably the best thing to reach for at that point, other than, again, lifestyle change, maximizing your lifestyle, um, diet and exercise. Um, if you sit down with your doctor and you look at risk factors and you say, I, I still am on the fence, I don't really want to start a statin, is there a way to kind of risk stratify me further? These new guidelines have brought up um, the idea of uh, obtaining a calcium score, which is essentially doing a test um, which doesn't use much more radiation than a, a, a kind of a, a, a mammogram that a woman would get. Um, it does use a little bit of radiation, but it kind of looks at the heart arteries under an x-ray and, and looks at how much calcium is in there, and it gives you a score. And um, there's essentially a score of zero would be very low risk. If you have a score of zero, unless you have extremely high risk factors, like a very, very positive family history, um, you can generally avoid um, starting medical therapy in those patients. If you smoke cigarettes, if you, you know, if you have chronic kidney disease, maybe those patients benefit from statin. But in general, calcium score of zero, you're, you're pretty safe with just um, lifestyle changes alone. Um, if you have a calcium score kind of in the zero to 100 range, that's kind of in the intermediate range, that's kind of a discussion between your doctor. Is a statin necessary at that point? Calcium score above 100, you know, you really want to start thinking about maybe I would mitigate my risk quite a bit by initiating statin therapy. Um, so that's where calcium score has kind of come into play in these newer guidelines. Not as a screening tool, but more as a further risk stratification tool of patients that are already at intermediate risk for some kind of event in the future. Interesting. Okay, you're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. If your pharmacy is closed, the Medicine Center Pharmacy welcomes you. Hi, this is pharmacist Brad White. Just like yesterday's corner drugstore, the Medicine Center Pharmacy offers personal and professional service. The Medicine Center Pharmacist will get to know your name and your pharmacy needs, plus offer prompt, friendly service and acceptance of prescription insurance plans. So make the Medicine Center Pharmacy at 551 West High Avenue in New Philadelphia your new pharmacy. The Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. 
That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Hi, this is Brad White, your Medicine Center Pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with a prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. It's that time of the year again when we struggle with dry, chapped skin, and cold and flu. Let us help you stay healthy for less at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our line of quality choice products includes skin cleansers, moisturizers, and cough and cold remedies, all priced much less than the name brand products. As a pharmacist, I can tell you quality choice compares to the big name brand products with the same quality and ingredients, but for a much smaller price tag. You'll save at Medicine Center Pharmacy. Stop by at any one of our locations in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, or visit us at MedShopRx.com. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're discussing the new cardiologist and president of the Akron American Heart Association Board of Directors. Let's get back to the final segment of the show. I'm thinking we ought to talk about Go Red because we're running close on time. Sure. And then we can circle back with uh, what other what other questions we may have for you. Oh, that sounds so, great to me. So what's, um, what's coming up for Go Red for Women? Well, uh, Go Red for Women is a... It's a campaign initiated by the American Heart Association uh, about 15 years ago or so. Uh, you know, like we discussed, there's a common misconception that um, heart disease is uh, a disease of men, older men, um, and it's the number one killer of both men and women in this country. So uh, I think the American Heart Association recognized that and started this campaign to really um, educate women on the uh, risks of atherosclerotic disease, high cholesterol, um, and uh, try to involve women in, in getting involved early, like we spoke about, um, talking to the doctor early on about checking cholesterol, learning about risk factors, mitigating risk factors, et cetera. So um, the Go Red for Women campaign has been an extremely su successful campaign initiated by the American Heart Association. And um, they have a luncheon every year. There's one in Canton and one here in Akron. The one in Akron is uh, on February 15th um, at the University of Akron Student Union and uh, starts at 11 a.m. And then the uh, the event in Canton is at uh, La Pizzeria in the Piazza Room um, on March 8th. And uh, that also, I believe, is at 11 a.m. These events are um, uh, critically important for uh getting awareness out there about the Go Red campaign for women, uh, improving health outcomes for women in our communities, and um, you know, helping to fundraise dollars for um, these campaigns uh, to aid with research, et cetera, that really makes an impact on improving the health of, of women and, uh, and our children in this community. So I encourage everyone out there to attend one or both of these events. They'll we, be wonderful. We brought a new guest into the studio here two minutes ago or two seconds ago. Would you please introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Valerie Stetler. I'm the Director of Development for Canton for Special Events. Okay. And you must be involved in this Go Red campaign. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, she I is. am. So um, I, the, Canton, or the Canton event is my event. The Akron event is Colleen Ruppy. She's the, the, my counterpart for Akron. And her event is, the theme is Art for the Heart. And it's going to be a fun day, um, and she's got some great surprises. And I just wanted to give um, the websites in case someone wants to sign up to, to go. Um, it's akrongored.heart.org, and you can sign up there by February 1st for that event on February 15th. Um, my event will be taking place on March 8th, as Dr. Dunn said. And my theme is um, 
she blinded me with science because we're going to be focusing on the STEM event that I'll be holding. It's, we're having a first time ever STEM uh, Goes Red for Girls event in mm-hmm. Canton, which will take place next November. But we're kind of kicking off the idea at Go Red this year. So we're going to be talking about science, technology, engineering, and math and the importance of getting young ladies into those fields for the Heart Association for future doctors and researchers and whatnot, but also just to help girls get into the the jobs of tomorrow, basically, and also to introduce them to local um, companies here that will be offering opportunities for them down the road for internships, co-ops, and potentially um, employment. We want them to stay locally. So um, we'll be having a lot of fun. Um, ML Schultz, who's a Canton native, will be our oh, MC yeah, sure. that day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have two survivor stories we'll be sharing. And then a great speaker, her name is Kay Francis, and she's going to be uh, giving a little presentation called Humor at the Heart of It All. And in the first hour, we have lots of fun things going on. We have, um, last year we had hand massages and chair um, chair yoga, and we always have hands-only CPR training um, taking place, as well as blood pressure, red blood pressure screening, because really the point of the day, as Dr. Dunn said, is to make sure that women leave that day understanding their risk, because it is, it is the number one killer of women, not just knowing their risk, but also knowing what they can do about it. And no, one of the number one things, as he said, is knowing those numbers. So blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugar, and BMI. So we're incorporating fun and education in this day. And um, it is our 15th, the 15th year of the Go Red movement. Um, and it, there's there have been a lot of good positive changes in women over this time. And we want to continue that because unfortunately it still is the number one killer so Mm. we still have a lot of work to do but if you'd like to come to the canton event um, my website for that is cantongored.heart.org we'd love to have you and you can sign up on there thanks for stepping into the studio thank you okay all right so um any closing thoughts for the listeners for being healthy beyond uh, reaching out and getting more education from Heart Association or yes. about their own health care? Yes, the American Heart Association. I, I encourage you to go to their website. It has a lot of wonderful resources. Uh, but just in general, I encourage everyone to um, really live a healthy lifestyle. Diet and exercise is critically important no matter uh, no matter who you are. And I encourage you to know your risk factors. You know, talk to your doctor. Get your cholesterol checked. Get your blood pressure checked at an early age, you know, earlier than you think. You know, again, first cholesterol check should be around the age of 20 and uh, maybe every five years from there know your risk and and you know stay close with your doctor keep in touch with your doctor um, to understand um, what you need to do moving forward to prevent that first heart attack or stroke a few seconds um okay everybody has acid reflux okay Mm -hmm. chest pains Mm -hmm. whatever whatever how do we differentiate between reflux pain chest pain they can feel very similar gas pain can often feel like um, chest pain if you have um, chest pressure that really feels uncomfortable and doesn't go away with antacids radiates down the arm radiates to the jaw is associated with shortness of breath sweating diaphoresis cold sweats um, those kind of things really point toward a cardiac source and and if you have that and it's and it's uh, sustained I really would encourage you to call 911 and get to an emergency room immediately I guess I always heard that, that if it was a heart issue it was crushing chest pain in, in the actually in the esophagus area across the esophagus area yes it can be classically that's kind of the classic uh, symptom yeah. um, women older patients diabetic patients often have uh, atypical symptoms and so it's difficult to yeah. tease out sometimes but if you have pain that you think is potentially a, a heart attack pain I encourage you to call 911 thank you very much doctor mm-hmm. thank you dr. Justin Dunn cardiologist from Summa Health and president of the Akron American Heart Association Board of Directors We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course our technical producer today, J.D. DeAngelis. As always, thank you our listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. We're a local Health Mart pharmacy caring for you and about you. Have a healthy week. It's going to be very cold this weekend, folks, so stay inside, and we'll see you again next Friday right here on News Talk 1480 WHBC. 
Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Star County Commissioner Bill Smith. Throughout the county, all their snow crews are ready. I think the salt bins are full and ready to go. And, you know, if you have to be on the roads, stay.